Tension members are structural elements that are subjected to axial tensile forces. They are used in various types of structures and include truss members, bracing for buildings and bridges, cables in suspended roof systems, and cables in suspension and cable stayed bridges. In this video, we will talk about the distribution of stress in tension elements, how to evaluate the tensile strength, how does the presence of holes influence the stress distribution, what changes in built-up sections, and how does the tension in cables behave. To assess the stress distribution inside tension members, we will use the Saint-Venant principle. In general, the stress in a section under tension is constant throughout the length of the member. The stress magnitude in this example can be visualized as the inverse of the distance between the stress lines, such that the further they are from each other, the less the stress is. In the presence of a hole in the member, the stress distribution changes and we obtain stress concentrations around the hole. This makes the section more susceptible to fracture and has to be taken into consideration when evaluating the strength of the member in tension. A member under tension can fail in one of two ways. The first one being yielding, which happens when the stress in the member under tension exceeds the yielding strength of the material and causes irreversible deformation. The load required for a member to fail due to yielding is calculated by multiplying the gross cross-sectional area by the yield strength. The second way a member under tension can fail is rupture. This happens when stress concentrations build up to a limit where the material fractures before it yields globally. The load required for a member to fail under rupture is calculated by multiplying the effective cross-sectional area of the member by the ultimate strength of the material. The effective area means the gross area minus the holes multiplied by a factor u, which we will discuss in the next part. Notice that both values are multiplied by strength reduction factors 0.9 for yielding and 0.75 for rupture. These are equations D2-1 and D2-2 in the AISC specifications. Here is an example of a plate with a hole with a height of A, thickness of B, and the hole diameter of D sub H. The gross area would simply be A multiplied by B. The nominal area would be the gross area minus the area of the hole, which is the diameter of the hole multiplied by the thickness. The effective area would be the nominal area multiplied by the factor U. This factor can be determined from table D3.1 from the AISC specifications chapter D and shown on the screen. When slenderness is not a consideration, rods with circular cross sections and cables are often used as tension members. The distinction between the two is that rods are solid and cables are made from individual strands wound together in rope-like fashion. Rods and cables are frequently used in suspended roof systems and as hangers or suspension members in bridges. The effective cross-sectional area in the threaded portion of a rod is called the stress area and is a function of the unthreaded diameter and the number of threads per inch. The ratio of stress area to nominal area varies but has a lower bound of approximately 0.75. The nominal tensile strength of the threaded rod can therefore be written as the tensile strength is equal to the stress area multiplied by the ultimate tensile strength. To prevent damage during construction, rods should not be too slender. Although there is no specification requirement, a common practice is to use a minimum diameter of 5 over 8 inches. There are two kinds of flexible cable components and the difference between them is illustrated here. A strand consists of individual wires wound helically around the central core, and a wire rope is made of several strands laid helically around the core. 
Selection of the correct cable for a given loading is usually based on both strength and deformation considerations. In addition to ordinary elastic elongation, an initial stretching is caused by seating or shifting of the individual wires, which results in a permanent stretch. For this reason, cables are often pre-stretched. Wire rope and strands are made from steels of much higher strength than structural steels and are not covered by the AISC specification. The breaking strength of various cables as well as details of available fixtures for connections can be obtained from the manufacturer's literature. For pin connected members, four failure conditions need to be evaluated and checked. These are tension rupture, which is calculated by multiplying the effective area by the ultimate strength. Shear, which is evaluated by multiplying the area of the shear path in the direction of the load by the ultimate strength reduced by 40%. The bearing strength, which results from the pin pressing against the edges of the whole surface, is determined by calculating the product of the bearing area and the yield strength increased by 80%. Lastly is the yielding of the cross section, which is found by using the yield strength and the gross area of the section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.